Hans Christian Andersen Fairy Tales and Short Stories Volume four eighteen fifty four to eighteen fifty nine by Hans Christian Andersen Translated by H. P. Paul The Money Box in a nursery where a number of toys were scattered about a money box stood on the top of a very high wardrobe it was made of clay in the shape of a pig and had been bought of the porter in the back of the pig was a slit and the slit had been enlarged with a knife so that doors or crown pieces might slip through and indeed there were two in the box besides a number of pens the money pig was stuffed so full that it could no longer rattle which is the highest state of perfection in which a money pig can attain there he stood upon the cupboard high and lofty looking down upon everything else in the room he knew very well that he had enough inside him to buy up all the other toys and this gave him a very good opinion of his own value the rest thought of this fact also although they did not express it for there were so many other things to talk about a large doll still handsome though rather old for her neck had been mended lay inside one of the drawers which was partly open she called out to the others let us have a game of being men and women that is something worth playing at upon this there was a great uproar even the engravings which hung in frames on the wall turned round in the excitement and showed that they had a wrong side to them although they had not the least intention to expose themselves in this way or to object to the game it was late at night but as the moon shone through the windows they had light at a cheap rate and as the game was now to begin all were invited to take part in it even the children's wagon which certainly belonged to the coarser playthings each has its own value said the wagon we cannot all be noblemen there must be some to do the work the money pig was the only one who received a written invitation he stood so high that they were afraid he would not accept a verbal message but in his reply he said if he had to take a part he must enjoy the sport from his own home they were to arrange for him to do so and so they did the little toy theatre was therefore put up in such a way that the money pig could look directly into it some wanted to begin with a comedy and afterwards to have a tea party and a discussion for mental improvement but they commenced with the latter first the rocking horse spoke of training and races the wagon of railways and steam power for these subjects belonged to each of their professions and it was right they should talk of them the clock talked politics tick tick he professed to know what was the time of day but there was a whisper that he did not go correctly the bamboo cane stood by looking stiff and proud he was vain of his brass ferrule and silver top and on the sofa lay two worked cushions pretty but stupid when the play at the little theatre began the rest sat and looked on they were requested to applaud and stamp or crack when they felt gratified with what they saw but the riding whip said he never cracked for old people only for the young who were not yet married i crack for everybody said the cracker yes and a fine noise you make thought the audience as the play went on it was not worth much but it was very well played and all the characters turned their painted sides to the audience for they were only made to be seen on one side the acting was wonderful excepting that sometimes they came out beyond the lamps because the wires were a little too long the doll whose neck had been darned was so excited that the place in her neck burst and the money pig declared he must do something for one of the players as they had all pleased him so much 
so he made up his mind to remember one of them in his will as the one to be buried with him in the family vault whenever that event should happen they all enjoyed the comedy so much that they gave up all thoughts of the tea party and only carried out the idea of intellectual amusement which they called playing at men and women and there was nothing wrong about it for it was only play all the while each one thought most of himself or of what the money pig could be thinking his thoughts were on as he supposed a very distant time of making his will and of his burial and of when it might all come to pass certainly sooner than he expected for all at once down he came from the top of the press fell on the ground and was broken to pieces then the pennies hopped and danced about in the most amusing manner the little ones twirled round like tops and the large ones rolled away as far as they could especially the one great silver crown piece who had often to go out into the world and now he had his wish as well as all the rest of the money the pieces of the money pig were thrown into the dustbin and the next day there stood a new money pig on the cupboard but it had not a farthing in its inside yet and therefore like the old one it could not rattle this was the beginning with him and we will make it the end of our story end of the money box